Welcome to this Math Made Easy video on normal distribution hypothesis tests. To start with, let's just discuss when to do a normal hypothesis test. Now there's two types of hypothesis tests that you need to know about. Binomial distribution hypothesis tests and normal distribution hypothesis tests. In binomial hypothesis tests, you are testing the probability parameter P. However, in normal hypothesis tests, you are testing the mean parameter mu. Okay, so for a normal hypothesis test, we test the mean parameter mu. Okay, so that's the Greek letter mu. And this gives us a key difference that we can use to determine what test to do and when. Now, since normal hypothesis tests test a mean parameter, we should look out for words such as mean, average, and overall. Okay, so overall. These are big clues that you should use a normal hypothesis test. The situation and context should also help you. If you would model it with a normal distribution, then you will want to use a normal hypothesis test. So that gives everything we need there for when to do a normal hypothesis test. Let's move on now to take a look at how to do a normal hypothesis test. So we define this with several steps. So let's start with step one here. The first thing we do is define the parameter in the context of the question. For a normal hypothesis test, the parameter is mu, which is always the mean of something. So step one here is we define the parameter in the context of the question. So define the parameter in the question in context, okay? So that gives us our first step there for how to do a normal hypothesis test. Step two here, as this is a hypothesis test, we want to define our hypotheses. So we write down our null hypothesis, H0. That's our null hypothesis. And we also write down the alternate hypothesis. So that's going to be H1. Okay, so that's our second step there to write down H0 and H1. For step three now, we define the test statistic x in the context of the question. So we define the test statistic. Okay, and we define the test statistic x here in context of the question. Okay, so in the context. Okay, so that's everything we need there for step three. Step four now, we write down the distribution of x under the null hypothesis. So define the distribution we define the distribution of x here or test statistic x under the null hypothesis, so under H0. Okay, so that gives us step four. For step five here, we just simply state the significance level. Even though you, will, you would be likely given this in the question, we wouldn't want to risk not stating this, as we could potentially lose the mark. So for step five, we state the significance level. And remember, for the significance level, we use the Greek letter alpha to represent this. Okay, so state the significance level alpha there. For step six here, we test for significance or we find the critical region. So, test for significance or we can find the critical region. So, or we find the critical region. And finally, we arrive at our last, our last step here, step seven. And all we do now to finish here is we write a concluding sentence linking the acceptance or rejection of H0 to the context of the question. So to finish with here, we write a concluding sentence. 
So we'll write a concluding sentence. Linking the acceptance or rejection of he is not. So linking the acceptance or rejection of he is not our null hypothesis to the context of the question. Okay. So that gives us everything we need there for how to do a normal hypothesis test. And finally, let's take a look now at handling multiple observations. Now, if we're given multiple observations on which to base our hypothesis test, then we can produce a more accurate result. And as a result of this, we would have a larger critical region. Now, if we have a normally distributed variable, let's say x, and this is, again, a normally distributed variable, so we can define this as normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. Well, the average of n observations of x has the distribution x bar, which again is a normal distribution with mean mu. And this time, this is sigma squared divided by n. Okay. Now, this means that if we are given multiple observations, we can do the hypothesis test with the average of the observations rather than a single observation. And of course, this is much better than using a single observation because it has a larger critical region. So that gives us everything we need there for handling multiple observations. And that concludes this Mass Made Easy video on normal distribution hypothesis tests.